All right. So far, we went through dynamic memory allocation. We got uh, the thing straightened out with encapsulation, how to put data and behavior together in a class. We learned how to make some of them private, some of them public. We understood that classes structures are public by default and classes are private by default. Anything we want to make private, we make private. Anything we want to make public, we make public. It has nothing to do with them being functions or attributes. It does not make any difference. Depending on the logic that you have, things get public and things become private. And based on our design, we will do that. Uh, we learned about uh, no argument constructor and no argument destructor, which uh, these are procedures that automatically get called when objects are born and right before the objects die. So um, we can add the processes we want to clean up our object when we start and clean up after ourselves when the object is going out of scope. Um, these processes, these, these procedures, they have the same name as the class. Obviously, in our stage, we understand they are only public. They cannot be private. You cannot privately create something. So if you make the constructor private, the object cannot get created. It doesn't make sense. Okay, so uh, you will see that in future, we'll see that it, that is possible, but not now. It's too rich for our blood. Uh, but uh, the constructor and destructor, uh, they have the same name as the class. The constructor has the name and it doesn't receive any arguments. We call it a no argument constructor. The destructor cannot get any argument. It's always no argument. And the name starts with a tilde. And because they are not functions, they don't return anything. So they cannot be manually called. If you manually try to call a constructor, no call will happen. Another thing is going to happen that we're going to learn later on. So don't think that you can reuse the code inside the constructor. If you have a constructor and you have a code inside and you want to reuse it, you have to put that code in another function and call the function in constructor and somewhere else. You cannot call a constructor. I have mentioned this 50,000 times in each of my classes, and still you guys are doing it. Um, no idea why, so please don't. Please do not call a constructor unless you know what does it do, okay? Uh, we talked about the current object. We talked about this, and we said THIS, this is uh, an, a built-in pointer inside C++, which holds the address of the object in which you are. So. If you have a method inside method, you can use the pointer this to kind of go outside and look at your object from outside, okay? Um, and when you have different instances of the object, based on which instance is executing a method, this will have the address of that instance. What are the uses for it? We still don't know. The only thing that I demonstrated for you what I can use with this to prevent collision of names when the name of, a, of, a, of an argument inside the method is the same name as the uh, attribute. And I said it's a very, very, very bad thing to do. I just showed you how it's done. And we stopped at that. Now that we know all these stuff, we can actually write more, uh, I can't say meaningful programs, but programs that makes more sense. So we can actually create objects of things and simulate stuff. For that, I need to be able to actually do proper input and output. For now, we only know a C in and C out, and we know a polymorphic uh, operator that is insertion operator, which inserts anything you put in front of it into C out, and we have an extraction operator that you extract anything you, uh, you want out of console, from console input. But they have their own mind when you are getting something from, for example, if you want to get a C string from console input, if you put a space in it, that is what, that will be a character. So you can never put somebody's full name in a string. If you do that, it's just gonna pick up its first name. We'll see that. So we're gonna learn now today how we can actually talk with, now that we understand member functions and privacy, I can actually tell you that C in and C out, they're actually 
instances of two classes. One class is called O-stream, that's C out, instance of C out is instantiated out of that one, O-stream, and I-stream is the class C in is made up of, okay? These C in and C out are global global objects, like global variables, real global. So when you include I-O stream, you will have these instances available. You don't need to instantiate them. Why they did this? Be because for keyboards and printing out are, are unique things. You cannot have two screens. The screen that you have is the screen that you have. When you read something, you have one keyboard that you're reading from. These are unique objects. Therefore, they should not be recreated. Because of that, C in and C out are created for you, and the compiler will not allow you to recreate them, which means if you try to create an instance of O stream, you're going to get some weird message that you don't understand what it is. The compiler won't allow you. So C in is an object of type I stream. C out is an object of type O stream. And these classes have 1,001 methods inside that they all do wondrous things. We're going to go through it and find out what they are today kind of thing in a very short way. So I'll tell you how to deal with them, and you can go take a look at the list of all the things and investigate what are the possibilities. Okay? Are we good? All right. When we dealt with classes, when I created classes for you for your examples, to do things with those classes, and we brought them inside. What was the class that we created? What was the name of the class? You might remember? That had, had some name, right? So we had a class name, and we created methods that set things inside the class. So you, when you pass something to the, so when you call that method, the method sets something inside the class. Sets the name, sets the last name, does something, it sets something. These are called setters. What a big surprise, okay? Setters, so essentially you're setting stuff with them or modifiers. These methods change stuff inside the class. We have methods that give you information from the class, okay? So when you call it, it tells you which state the class is in. Like, is the class empty or not? Or you're gonna say, print the class. Things that get information outside of the class somehow, and they don't modify the class. So essentially, you are making queries out of the state of the class. These methods are called queries. Queries are usually constant methods that they are not allowed to change the, the, the thing they're called in. And we have many queries and setters in C in and C out. So before you, you can always prepare these objects to behave differently before you actually do an action, okay? So I'm going to say, if you are coming to my wedding, you're supposed to wear a tux, right? If I don't do that, you're my friend, you're going to come with your pajamas. I don't want that. So I call a setter method setting you to wear a tux. Or if you're a bridesmaid, you're supposed to wear this pink, ugly dress, okay? That's, the, you know that, you, the ladies all experience that, right? So that's what you, and so I call that setter method, and when you participate in a wedding, you're gonna behave that way, you're gonna look that way, you're gonna feel that. So we do the same thing for our C out. When you just print something on C out, it just prints it the way it likes it. But you can always preset C out. Tell to C out, hey, when you do the next printout, I want you to print it in this many spaces. When you print the next printout, I want your next printout to be right justified. When you do your next printout, I want you it is to be next part, left justified. When you print the next printout, I want you to print in 20 characters, be right justified, and fill the spaces with dots. Things like that. And then when you set it up, you do your regular printout, and it will print the way you prepared it before. That's how object orientation works. In C language, you didn't do that. You said, print this integer in this manner. Print that float, and so you had a format specifiers. We don't do that. We first tell to the object what is going to get printed, and then we do the printout. I know it's a little bit more difficult 
because in printf, you write one format specifier and you print 50 things in it. And each one is printed in a different way. In C++, what you do, you prepare the C out to print in a specific way, you print one item. Then you set it again to do something else, then you print one item. Then you prepare, it's longer path to go through, but that's how real objects work, okay? So, and you'll see that uh, eventually it's gonna make things easier. So what happens is that because we have an object-oriented thing, you can tell to a name, set up the print of a name to set C out in a certain way, so you don't have to worry about it anymore. As soon as you say print, name will print itself in a proper way. You can create a class called price that holds a double value in it, and when you print the price, you will know it's going to be a dollar sign beside it, it's going to have two uh, uh, digits after the decimal point. Okay, so all these things can be prepared. So we're going to learn how to prepare C in and C out to behave in a certain way. Are we okay? All right. I'm not going to cover everything in here, okay? I'll, I'll give you some examples of how things work, and then you have to go read the notes at the, at the bottom of the functions and privacy section, and there are a bunch of things over there. And if you have any problems, you come and ask me, okay? So everything's not going to be covered. I'll show you how everything behaves. Details, you've got to find out yourself. That's how we do it. So I'm going to have an integer value over here. And I'm going to set it to 1, 2, 3, 4. Now I want to print this thing. So if I just go C out, 1, 2, 3, 4, and end L, and I print it out, 1, 2, 3, 4 is going to get printed, right? Now, what I'm going to do in here is this. I want to print this 1, 2, 3, 4 in a specific in certain space. So I, now I'm going to say C out dot, I don't even remember, width? Yeah. So C out width, I'm going to put over here 20. Okay? Now I'm going to say, hey, the width of your next printout will be such. Okay? So in here I'm going to say, and let's put a val2 in here too. So val1. Val two. Now in here I'm gonna say C out, val two, or val one again, and print it out. So I prepared C out to have the width of 20. And as you see now, one, two, three, four is printed. Bec and because it's an integer, they would say, okay, numbers are supposed to be right justified, right? And that, now, so if I print it again, let it happen. So now, if I actually go over here and print it again, I'll go C out val. Will that one get printed in 20 spaces? The answer is no. Width is one of those things that only affects the next printout. And that's it. And the next printout is literally the next printout. Let me demonstrate. So now I'm going to have that valve thingy over there, and I'm going to do this. C out dot width. Let's put 30. And I'm going to say C out, and I'm going to print it. Print first an asterisk. Then I'm going to put val1, and I'm going to put an asterisk after. So I want those asterisks to be before and after val1, and I want that those asterisks to be before and after val1, and val1 to get printed in the width of 30, okay? 
and I run this program, and to my surprise, this is what's going to happen. Oh, it just happened. Remember, the next printout. What is the next printout? Asterisk. It's going to print the asterisk in 30 spaces. Then it's going to print 1, 2, 3, 4. Then it's going to print asterisk. So that's not going to work out. If the next printout is supposed to be, it's literally the next printout using insertion operator. So if you want to print it in two different, between two asterisks, you need to separate them. You have no other choice. Now this is going to get printed between two asterisks in 30 something spaces. That'll be good? You okay? So what if I want this to be left justified? To be left justified, you have to, you have to set a, so I'm just going to bring this right down. This is going to be the next one. So in here, I'm going to say cout.set flag. You have to set a flag. Now the flag that you are setting, these are constant values that are inside the I.O. stream. So let me just tell you something that you need to know. Before we begin continuing with what I'm going to do with the flag, I'm going to show you something. Let me pause. So this is what we have. These are the classes that we have. And the I stream over here is the one that C in is built out of. So this is essentially C in. The, uh, the object of it is called C in. And the object of this one is called C out, the object that is created out of it. Okay, so C in is an I stream that is a child of iOS. So anything is remember motorcycles and a bicycle is a motorcycle is a bicycle. I stream is an IO system, and O stream is an IO system. So things are that are common between these two are in iOS. So iOS has lots of constant values that are set for flags, and we use them to set the flag in our C in and C out. So when I say iOS, iOS is the parent of O stream. And O stream have access to all of these, uh, of its behavior. So essentially what I'm saying is that in here I'm going to say I, iOS, and I'm going to say over here left. So I'm saying set the flag of the printout to be left justified. And if I run this program now, you will see that the next output over here will be left justified. OK? And remember, these are flags that you are setting. Please remember, these are flags that you are setting. So remember, after you are done, always unset it. So C out goes to its own thing. Unlike with, this remains forever. So the justification is permanent, OK? With is temporary. So this is next printout only. This is until changed, OK? Just remember that. So if you don't unset it, in one function, you do left justify. Then you go to another function to print something that they're left justified, where you don't want it. So you've got to make sure that after you are all done with it, with your printout, put the thing back in its own original thing. So go C out dot unset F, the exact same thing. Now you can go with the next settings that you have. So now if I want it, so that's left justified. Now. <clears throat> The next one, I want to actually uh, not only left justify it, but I want to fill everything with, uh, I don't know, uh, say tilde. Okay? So what I will do, I'm going to have the exact same thing. So it is left justified. And in here, I'm going to say C out dot fill with tilde.
So now when I print this up, now it's going to print that and fill the spaces with tilde. Are we good? And this works for everything because it's object oriented. You don't need to learn a different thing when you are printing a double. You don't need to learn a different thing if you're printing a string. Anything you print, this works with. So this is with and justification. So now if, I, if it's left justified, I want to set the other one to right justified. What do I do for the other one? Then I'm going to go something like this. This is iOS right. And again, make sure afterwards you set it to right. And you run it. Now the other one's going to be right justified. Are we OK? So remember, any those things that are not permanent, who cares? Let them just OK? Those who are permanent, always reverse them afterwards. Are we OK? Now, that's printing integers. How do we deal with? Uh, floating points. Why we are actually telling anything different with with the floating points? Because we just talked, we just said that hey, you can do it with everything, right? So if this is actually a double value in here. And, I, and if I print it like this, this is what's going to show, right? Right? It went four. So it has a mind of its own. It doesn't have a fixed format. And when you have the values different in size, and you print it, you will see that Wow, it went to scientific notation suddenly. There is no fixed format. C out says I print the double the way I feel it's sufficient. I don't have a fixed type of format for you. It varies different things, right? You can fix that. You can actually tell to the to double, hey, I want you to be fixed. When I set you to something, be like that always. Don't jump from method to method. Don't have a mind of it's your own. Follow what I am telling you. So now, let's put some, <laughs> something that actually makes sense over here. OK, something like that. So what you do, the very first thing you do before you do double, you say C out dot set f iOS fixed. It means don't jump around. Be the same all the time. Then you have to tell to see out what you want the precision of printout to be. What is precision? Number of digits after the decimal point. If you want two, you set the precision to two. If you want five, you put it five. It doesn't make any difference. It will always do that. So in here, I'm going to say see out. Oh, it's just precision? Yeah, precision. And in here, I'll put something. What do I put? Uh, uh, see out the precision. I'll put say three. Okay. When I put three and I do the printout, you will see that now it's only printing three digits after the decimal point. Exactly how much you want. That, ladies and gentlemen, is double. All the doubles stuff. Are we okay? Left, right, width, double. Everything's done. So, and for strings, I'm not going to tell you anything because it, they don't have anything to to, to say. What you print, whatever you have inside your C string. When I say string, I mean C string. The class string of C++ is forbidden in OP244. You are not touching it. OK? Remember that. <clears throat> so that you cannot use. Where you were asking, can I use this and that? Yeah. You cannot use a string class. OK? So for strings and doubles, they're all the same. So in here, I'm going to say C double formatting, double format dot cp. OK, so that's that. Now, this is good. 
fine, dandy, easy, nice, beautiful. Let's see how we can actually read. How does the reading work? OK. Many questions down to this point. Suggestions? Objections? All right. Yes. You didn't understand that? Oh, what I'm saying is that Come on. Obviously, fixed and precision is, it doesn't matter. It works the exact same way. For C strings, there is no new thing to teach. Because there are values, it works the same way. We OK now? That's with, that's with C strings. OK? C in is extremely shy. C out is too. But C in has much more interaction. C out doesn't have much more interaction. You don't do anything to C out that C out doesn't uh, uh, becomes angry at you. But C in is very shy. If you do something stupid, it won't talk to you anymore. Seriously. Like, you tell to C in, read an integer. You give it a string, it says, I'm not talking to you anymore, ever. Done. I'm not going to get your crap anymore. That's what it's going to do. Take a look. I have integer a, integer num, and say uh, character uh, string 81. OK? Are we good? Now in here, I'm going to say c out, c out. I'm going to say int. So you enter the int, right? Actually, let me go by. You print the int. Then I'm going to go c in num. And I'm going to go C out string. Sorry, C string or string is fine. And I'm going to go C in str. OK? Oh, <laughs> what did I do? OK, see? And then I'm going to say C out uh, uh, int has the value num, and I'm going to have the string having the value str. And I go to new line, right? Something like that. Uh, <clears throat> what else I need? So let's put over here 10, and put over here o, o, OK? So these are the things that I have. Now I want to run this. So I, I get a number, and I get a string, and I keep get on with it, right? So if I run this program now, if I'm a good boy and I say one, two, three over here, and in here I say hello, it's going to say one, two, three, and the string is hello. Are we OK with this? All right. <clears throat> Problem is here. If I run this, and in here I say 10, and I hit enter, this happens. Just the, the second one won't even happen. It won't even st start. Like, when the first one fails, C says, you gave me garbage. I'm not talking to you anymore until you apologize. And you have to apologize. 
You have to get things clear between you two, okay? Otherwise, it won't work anymore. And how do we know that CN actually failed? CN acts like a Boolean if you ask a question from it and says if you're okay or not. So this is what we can do. After I'm getting the number, I can say if C in, and I do that. So if you say if C in, it actually asks, are you OK? C in says, OK. It means I'm fine. Nothing went wrong. If it fails, it's going to say I'm very bad. You're a bad person. You have to apologize. So what do we do? Now in that case, in here, I'm going to say, so, and you can do the exact same thing if not C in. So I'll put this over here. Okay? So now, inside the if statement, I can check to see if C in failed or not. So now, in here, I'm going to say, oh, made a boo boo. So in here, I'm going to say, C in dot clear. That means I am so sorry. OK, it means, OK, I know I did something wrong. Apologize, and let's work together again. And then you're going to say, hey, CN, ignore everything that I told you up to backslash n. Because that's usually what happens, right? You enter some garbage and you hit enter, right? So it ignores until it hits backslash n and then stops, which means you're essentially flushing the keyboard up to 10,000 characters. If somebody puts more than 10,000 characters, let it really fail, OK? So that's that. So you're saying ignore. And then after that, you can get your string, OK? So now, if I actually run this program, if I run this program, if I enter one, two, three, it's going to get the string, and the string is going to be hello. So it's going to say one, two, three, hello. But if I run the program and I, get, and I say 10, OK, now it's going to get the string because what happened? I apologized, right? And ignored all those 10 things. So now I'm going to say hello, and it's going to say zero and hello. <laughs> Because it couldn't read it, it said it defaults it, right? You, you, you did something garbage. So you still get the rest of this stuff. So this mechanism that actually tells you if C in failed or not can be done in many different ways. Either ask a question if statement from C in, or you can say this. Again, many ways of doing the same thing. If C in dot fail, that's the same. It returns a Boolean value. Why is it? What did I do? Oh, curly bracket. Stupid compiler. OK. All right. Are we OK? <laughs> so now that, so line number nine is potatoes. Line number eight is potatoes. Same thing. Whichever you like, use it. If you like fail, write fail. If you say not fail, it means success. OK? Are we OK with this? Are we OK one? Are we OK two? So let's write a full proof. Let's write a full proof, get int, so it doesn't take users garbage and only works if user actually puts some integer. Let's do that. We OK? Shall we? All right. So I'm going to go to my utilities. And in the class utilities of mine, I'm going to create uh, a function, OK? Because I want these things to be accessible later on. Actually, not, not, not fast. I'm going to make it a structure. So right out of the bat, I'm trying to uh, <clears throat> do stuff. Uh, should I put it in a class or just make it a function? We know, we know. So this is a utility class, OK? It's, it has everything public, public, and uh, uh, I'm using it as a, a package that I'm carrying my tools with it. 
Okay? So in here, I'm going to create a function int, and I'm going to call it get int. Okay? And I'll do it like that. So it accepts nothing, and that's that. It just gets an integer. So what am I going to do in here? <clears throat> I want to get an integer, right? So int value val is what I'm getting. Are we OK? And I'm hoping that they actually prompted before this. If somebody calls a get integer, they've got to give me a prompt, like enter your age or something, right? So what do I do in here? I'm going to say, <clears throat> uh, cn val. So I'll get the value. Oh, I need, I need uh, io3. <laughs> And I need STD. OK, so, so I get it, right? So as soon as this happens, what I'm going to do? I'm going to say while cn.fail. So if cn failed, what am I going to do? I'm going to say, hey, so. So in here, I'm going to go C out. No, I have to tell him. Invalid int. Retry. Or redo. Give him an option to fix the thing. Now I'm going to say, my apologies. Now I'm going to say, clean everything. What am I, how am I cleaning? Uh, C in dot ignore. 12,000 is safe. <laughs> OK, up to backslash n, right? And then what I'm going to do after, so yeah. So and then I'm going to do again, c in. Wow, let's try again. And then at the end, I'm going to return the val. Remember about buffered entry? Do you remember about buffered entry? Buffered entry, anybody? You don't remember? What is a buffered entry? Your keyboard has a buffered IPC 144, buffered entry. Which means if I enter 1, 2, 3, A, B, C, D, and I say ask, read an integer, 1, 2, 3 will be read. A, B, C, D remains in keyboard, buffered for the next one to come in. Right? We good? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so, so you clear the buffer. So we're going to make this more intelligent later on. So it only accepts an integer, but let's for now do this. So if I go C in val, what's going to happen? It's at, and the user enters actually something nicely. One, two, three, and hits the enter. What happens? It did not fail, comes over here, and comes out. Is there anything left in the keyboard? Why were it quiet? Close your eyes. Enter one, two, three, and hit enter. What are the keys that you enter? Okay, I have to get the microphone. I hit one, two, three, and enter. What are the keys that are hit? Well, didn't hit there and enter, so something should still be inside the buffer. So it's. It was a simple question. I'm entering one, two, three, and I hit enter. What keys are hit? One, two, three. Enter, right? Which one of these are integers? Is backslash an integer? So it's left in a keyboard. Are we okay with this? Do we understand this? Yes, I understand. Good. Okay, so what I can do, I can, even after everything is successful, nice and dandy, I can say C and ignore. Like that. That means only ignore one character. to ignore that one backslash n. Or you want to be more forgiving. Say, if, you, if I can't read an integer, I'm going to clear the buffer. So if user enters 1, 2, 3, a, b, c, d, I'm going to ignore that a, b, c, d after. Just going to get the integer at the beginning. You can do that. If you want to do that, instead of only one integer, you can actually write the same thing that you had over here. Which means. 
if they enter anything more than one integer, it's going to be ignored. So user enters something sane. User is an intelligent person, enters something sane. One, two, three, enter. One, two, three goes to wow, comes over here, says, ignore 12,000 characters up to backslash n. The very first one is backslash n. So eats it and goes up, right? Number two, user is semi-intelligent. So you say, enter an integer, it says one, two, three is the value and hits the enter. So one, two, three comes in, is the value, and new line remains in keyboard. So it didn't fail. It actually read the integer, right? It comes over here, ignores is the value, and comes out, right? If user enters some, something completely stupid, like hello, then it's going to say, I failed, invalid entry. It prints that one, clears it, wipes out the hello and everything, gets the value, tries again. So now this get integer of mine is actually, where am I? Uh, did I save this at all? I don't think I saved this, did I? Uh, C, D, E, uh, C, in, being shy. <laughs> okay, so that's that. Let's go back in here. Now in here, I can actually say include utils. So to use utils, what do I need to do? I need to instantiate it, right? Otherwise, how can I use it, correct? Are we okay with this? Are we okay with this? So I have to say over here, utils dot utils ut, that's something like that, it's called it, right? And I need to say using using namespace Seneca, right? Now I have ut, I can say num, oh, so I'm going to say c out, enter an int. And then I can say num is set to ut dot get int, right? And c out, I'm going to say you enter uh, no. Are we okay with this? And if I run the program, hopefully if it works and I don't have 55,000 errors, I can do this. Hit enter and it's going to say invalid entry. Try again. I can say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 is the integer I want. And it still gets it and passes through. And, and you can get the next one. So I can have another integer to receive over here. So I can do it twice over here. So, so I can enter 1, 2, 3 is the value. And it still gets it and goes to the, the other one. And I can say 2, 3, 4. And I hit enter and it works. So there is no way that I can get rid of this thing until I give it an integer. Are we OK with this? Are we OK one? Are we OK two? All right. We can do the same thing. We, we, there is another thing that we need to learn. So in here, I'm going to say uh, get int tester. That's it. Get int tester. That's it. Get int tester. Yeah. For strings, what do I do? I have problem with strings. So in here, I'm going to say character name, 81. And I want to be able to get Fred space Soleil. I can't do that with regular strings, right? If I just say in here, if I say C out, please, please enter a name. If I do something like this, and I go C in name, C out name, if I do something like this, and I have two names back to back that I want to get, when I run this, 
If I put over here Fred, it works. Then I'll go Soleil, it works, right? But the problem is that if I write over here Fred Soleil, this is what's going to happen. So it gets the first one. Second one says, so the first one goes like this. Second one comes. It, it gets them both because the rest is remaining in the buffer, right? But the prompt will going to go bananas. I don't want that. I want one value to be entered. We have a method inside CN that does that for us, and that is called get line. Get line essentially means get everything in a line that ends with a backslash n. So what I can do over here is to say get line, and in get line you put the, uh, the what you want to put it into, and you put the exact length of the array, 81, not, not. Uh, uh, not the, what should we call it? Not the 80. Get line knows when you're saying 81, one belongs to, for the null. You do it that way. Now you can actually enter spaces in it and it will still work. So if I come over here and do it like this, in here I'm going to say Fred Soleil. Fred Soleil is received because it reads up to backslash n. And the other one is going to be Homer Simpson, and Homer Simpson is received, right? So we have two different ones. Are we okay with this? All right. So that's get line. But let's check. So in here, I'm going to say get line general, E E F. Now, what happens if I put over here five? What happens if I put 5 over there? So in here, I'm going to, oh. So in here, I'm going to say, Walter, whatever. OK? <laughs> what? Walter, what? <laughs> OK. <laughs> Anyways, so I hit Enter over here. What the hell? I changed the wrong one. I changed the wrong one. I changed the wrong one. Don't laugh at me. I changed the wrong one. OK, let's put this one over here. I, I save. OK, now let's run it one more time. Walter, whatever. OK, as you see, it says Walt. And what happened to the next one? See, is shy. Okay, so if it reaches, if it reaches to the limit without seeing backslash n, it says, "Hey, you went too far." Right? So now we can actually write a foolproof thing, even for strings. Right? So what I can do is this: I can actually write a function like this. I can say, in my utils, I can write something like. <clears throat> void get string get sorry 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 c string and in here I have a character pointer string and I have integer length oh so my my sincere apologies size length size t length right so I'm writing this and now I can actually have the same format as the other one, which is essentially exactly like I've done over here. I'm going to put it over here. But instead of <coughs> int val thingy over here, I'm going to go see a string into string, right? Into the address that I received. And if it failed, I'm going to say too long. Uh, uh, maximum. Um, len characters retry. So let's let's go like this. I'm gonna go do something like that. Let's be let's be uh, let's do everything uh, in the same way. So I'm gonna do it like that. Retry, <coughs> clear, ignore up to backslash n, and get the string again. But the difference over here, oh, OK, 
Did I put like that? I'm a bad person. I'm a very bad person. Get line into SDR len plus 1, because you know it's going to add 1 to it for the null, right? So in here, I'll do it like that, and I'll get it again like this. But the difference is that in here, I don't need to ignore at the end. Why? Because I know get line does it. Get line eats the backslash in. Doesn't let it be there. It eats it. So now, it actually tells me how far I, I did it too much, and, I, and it's going to keep fixing it, OK? So now it's uh, uh, kind of a foolproof get string type of thing. Now, <clears throat> in here, I can actually write something like, ut dot get c string into name five, okay, and same thing over here. I'll, I'll put eighty, and I run it. Hopefully, it's going to work. So in here, I'll go Walter, and it's going to say maximum five cars. I should have made it better. I forgot the spaces. I'll fix it later. So in here, I'm going to say Fred. Now it's going to say, it's OK. Please enter a name, whatever. And it's going to get watered, whatever that is. Anyway, so now it's working. I'm going to fix that. And I'm going to end the session with one thing in here. Let me just fix the spaces over here. That is, <clears throat> I don't like it that I have to instantiate the utils over there. I don't like that I have to instantiate the utils over there. I want the utils to be available everywhere, like C out. I want anybody to include, that includes utils to have access to the object ut or util. Oh, ut is fine. I don't want to go through. So, so what I will do over here is this. First of all, I'm going to come and do it in here. Right in here at the top, I'm going to create a global variable, and I'm going to call that thing utils ut. So that is created. But we know that's not global. In C language, they call it global. It's wrong. Because that is only accessible to utils.cpp, correct? I cannot use it in prg.cpp. Are we fine? OK with that? So now what I can do in here is this. Take this off here first. If I'm, how do I, how am I using get string over here? By well, using the prototype for it, right? You can actually write a prototype for that ut variable to make it accessible everywhere. So variables like functions can have prototypes too. What is the prototype for a, for a variable? First, you copy the variable exactly like you did for functions. But the difference is that in front of it, you say extern. That becomes prototype for the ut inside utils.cpp. So it means if anybody includes my utils.h, we'll be aware that there is a ut object of utils type in utils.cpp that they can use. Therefore, in here now, UT is available, exactly like C out. So when I do, when I went over there, include IO stream, C out became available. Now I met the utils the same way. Anyway, you say utils, the UT will be available for, to you to use the utilities inside. Are we okay with this? So now if I run it, it works the exact same way. And as of now, I'm going to keep adding functions to these utils, and I strongly suggest you uh, adopt it too. Bring it into your works directory. And when you are having workshops, you can do that. When you are submitting, all you need to do is to add a U to the beginning of your submission. So if you call it UP1 underline NAA, it's going to include your utils too. So you can reuse your code that you have over and over. Carry your toolbox from one workshop to another so you don't have to rewrite the whole thing. And every time you make improvements, it's going to be better and better. Are we okay? Are we okay? She's not okay. What's up? Oh, it's a global variable in there. In utils.cpp, there's a global variable called ut. 
No, I don't declare. Declare it again? Extern in front of it. That's not declaring. I am telling by calling, by putting extern, I am telling everyone, hey, there is an external UT variable of type utils declared somewhere. Use it. This is a prototype. It's not declared again. That's wrong terminology, my dear. OK? Are we OK with this? Are we OK? Are we OK one? Are we OK two? All right. Have a beautiful day, everyone. See you later.